you can monitor embryo development and actually detect non-invasively which embryos are chromosomally normal versus chromosomally abnormal. Not all of them, but many of them using the cell cycle parameters. And so what we found is that we actually needed an additional parameter to, in conjunction with the cell cycle parameters, to basically weed out the rest of the aneuploid embryos. And that parameter was cellular fragmentation. So in this case, what we would envision is that, as you know, there's clinical trials going on in the state of California, as, as well as abroad, um, using the cell cycle parameters to predict which embryos would form blastocysts. So if we could use that in conjunction with the automatic fragmentation detection, we could also determine which embryos are likely to be chromosomally normal versus abnormal. So the way that it works now is, again, you hyperstimulate a woman. You get anywhere from, I mean, the average, I think it's about 15 to 20 eggs. You fertilize them either by IVF or ICSI. Um, then uh, in the case of um, without the time-lapse imaging, basically you have an embryologist or a couple of embryologists that are assessing morphology um, solely and then determine which one looks the best. It's a beauty contest and then they decide which embryo or embryos in the majority of cases are going to be transferred. Um, with the time-lapse imaging, we can not only determine which one is going to become a blastocyst, but again, which one could be like likely result in a chromosomally normal embryo that would go on to have a successful pregnancy and um, hopefully a healthy baby. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.